I'm Nick, and this is one of the boards that I've been waiting for from ASRock. This is the ASRock X870 Tai Chi Creator, and I gotta address this right from the jump. Yep, it looks exactly like the Pro Art board, and I think that's the point of it. Let's take a closer look. All right, here it is, the all new ASRock X870 Tai Chi Creator. This board is interesting because, I'm gonna spoil it, it's got 10 gigabit ethernet, and it's not too expensive. All right. Let's get that motherboard out of the way so we can take a bit of a closer look at everything that comes with this brand new board from ASRock. First of all, we've got the included Wi-Fi antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 7. We've got this little thermal probe here. Basically, this will allow you to read temperatures in other parts of your case and adjust the fan speeds accordingly. There's also a three pin five volt addressable RGB splitter cable. This is in case you wanted to add RGB lighting in your system for some reason in 2025. I don't know. It's completely up to you. I'm not hating. It's just how it is. There's some documentation, specifically the quick installation guide. This will help you get up and running and get everything in the right place if you've never built a PC before or if you have, it's a good little reference guide. And finally, there's a set of SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your three and a half inch hard drives or spinning rust drives. All right, let's uh, unsheath the X870 Tai Chi Creator and uh, take a bit of a look at what's on the board because there's quite a bit going on here. First of all, we've got the front panel audio header. There's a four pin 12 volt analog RGB header. There's a three pin five volt addressable RGB header. Now there's something different here. There's three, yep, you heard right, three USB 2.0 front panel headers. There's four PWM fan headers. There's the header for the thermal probe, which I showed just a little bit earlier. There's a USB 3.2 front panel header, as well as a clear CMOS header, and the front panel headers for all the lights and all the switches to turn on your system and to let you know that it's up and running. On the right-hand edge of the board, there's four SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5-inch SSDs or your 3.5-inch spinning RAS drives. There's a right-angled USB 3.2 header. There's a USB Type-C header. There's the 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new X870 Tai Chi Creator. There's two three pin five volt addressable RGB headers. There's a reset button, a power button, and then finally, there's a postcode debug LED screen. On the top right hand edge of the board, there's three PWM fan headers. And on the top left hand edge of the board, there's two eight pin EPS power connectors to send juice to your Ryzen 7000, 8000, or 9000 processors including, I'm going to guess here, AMD EPIC 4004 and 4005 CPUs as well. As for the PCIe slots, this one's a little bit interesting because ASRock is saying that they're all PCIe by 16 slots, which is just not true. There's a single PCIe 5.0 by 16 slot at the top. The second slot down is actually a PCIe Gen 5 by 8 slot with a by 16 size connector. And finally, the bottom slot is a PCIe Gen 3 by four slot. Like many other boards that we see at the moment, there is a quick release mechanism for the top PCIe slot. This ASRock one is pretty nice and it's spring-loaded and it makes your life a lot easier if you're ripping your GPU out. As for the VRM layout, this board features an 18 plus two plus one phase VRM layout with 80 amp smart power stages, You'll notice that the main heatsink for the VRM cooling is absolutely massive and it covers the whole IO area as well as the heatsink at the top of the board, which is very dense as well. Because this is an AM5 board, it has standard AM5 cooler mounting, but let's pop that socket open just in case you've never seen what the inside of an AM5 socket looks like. This is a handy reference for people who are building a new PC or who have never built a PC, I always do this because this makes your life a little bit easier and not everyone is a PC enthusiast and has seen inside a CPU socket before. Flipping the board over, you'll notice that the X870 Tai Chi Creator has a full cover backplate and this board features an eight layer PCB as well. As for the memory configuration on this board, this board has four DDR5 DIMM slots. It will support up to 256 gigs of memory in total at 8,000 mega transfers. Keep in mind, guys, as I always say, this is a specification, not a recommendation. There's four M.2 slots in total on this board here. Now, the top slot has a quick release mechanism. 
and the other two slots for some reason have a regular heatsink with two screws. I always find this confusing with ASRock boards. I'm not quite sure why they do this. Just make a quick release system, guys. You've done it for one slot, just do it for the rest. As for the M.2 slots on this board, the top two slots are PCIe Gen 5 by four slots. The next slot is a PCIe Gen 3 by four slot and the bottom slot is a PCIe Gen 4 by four slot. All of the slots on this board do have a quick release mechanism for the drives themselves. So you don't need to use any screws when installing M.2 drives on the X870 Tai Chi Creator. For rear IO, there's a BIOS flashback button. There's a clear CMOS button. There's the antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 7. There's an HDMI 2.1 port for integrated graphics. There's a whole bunch of USB 3.2 whatever gen ports. There are all lots of different generations here. There's two USB 2.0 ports. There's five gigabit ethernet as well as 10 gigabit ethernet. And then there's two USB 4 40 gigabit ports as well as a microphone jack, a line-in jack, and an optical slash SPDIF audio output. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed taking a bit of a look at everything on the board, but what do I think about this new board from ASRock? As I mentioned in the intro, yeah, it looks like the Pro Art boards, and it's the point. I think that uh, ASRock is trying to capitalize on that creator space at the moment where everyone just loves all the Pro Art stuff, and I think they've gone the right way with this because, I'll come back to this in a sec, because the pricing is the most interesting thing from a creator standpoint, but also the fact that this has 10 gigabit ethernet. You guys know what I've been saying about 10 gig for years. If not, here's the uh, bottom line. Every motherboard in 2025 should come with 10 gigabit ethernet. Whether or not you're going to use it, that's not the point. The point is 10 gigabit ethernet is the next level up from gigabit ethernet in terms of where networking should scale. 2.5 gig is fine, but it's a weird multi-gig standard. Five gigabit is also a weird multi-gig standard. We go from one to 10, and that's how we do. You don't buy five gigabit switches, you buy 10 gig switches, and that's why I like 10 gigabit ethernet. Plus, for what I do, and especially for creators, 10 gigabit ethernet is much more useful than two and a half gig. Just just putting it out there. But the thing that makes this more attractive than the Pro Art for me personally is the pricing here because the ASRock X870 Tai Chi Creator is going for around about 319 US dollars at the time of filming this video. Well, that's if you can get the board. That is way less than the Pro Art board from memory. I don't know, I didn't look up the price, but yeah, especially if you're looking at the ASUS board that is comparable to this in Australia. Well, right now at least it's about a thousand Aussie dollars. And this one won't be going for more than about 650. So, you know, that's that's the bottom line with the thing. It's got an 18 plus two plus one phase VRM. It's got five and 10 gigabit ethernet. It's got plenty of storage options as well as Thunderbolt 4, or let's just call it USB 4 because the standards are all over the place. But you get the idea. This board is looking fantastic. In fact, my thoughts on this board is when we rebuild the studio PC again this year, which is gonna happen very, very soon, make sure you subscribe for that. I'm gonna be using this board. It just makes sense. It's not overly expensive for what you're getting. It's really, really not. I think ASRock has done a great job at kind of finding a place for this 
in their product stack, especially for people like me who prefer the non-RGB look. I don't care for the gold accents and whatnot. That's really not the point. The fact that this has no RGB that stands out to you is nice and 10 gigabit ethernet. Come on, you can't argue with that, guys. It's looking very attractive. As well as that, look at all the USB ports. I can see 12 of them right now. Crazy.